uh, <coughs> without being uh, confusing, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that we are the offspring of, when I say we, I mean every person, personality you can reach back into written history and get is the offspring of some parent. But then they were the offspring of some parents. If the Bible is presenting Adam and Eve as the original two beings who come from God, then we're only 5,000 years old. That's as far as they take history. But we know in the esoteric, they're talking about a certain kind of human being who's only perhaps 5,000 years old. And we can't even be sure of that. So, this idea of original being, first parent, supersedes what we would be calling human. We don't evolve. We devolve. We are in a state of devolution. We have the densest body of the seven bodies that a soul wears. The physical body does not grow a spiritual, astral, causal, etheric body of light and a supreme consciousness. It's just the reverse. In other words, we're built from top to bottom. You are spirit consciousness first. Then you take a form, but the form is not physical first. It's at the least realm of de appreciated, slowed down energy. Okay, that's what Adam and Eve is all about. Okay, the rib we talked about. Th this is the key secret to the understanding of Adam and Eve. If first you understand that the Adam they're talking about comes from this kinetic word and hieroglyphic, which I do not have, to this English Greco-Latin term that is equated with this biblical term in relationship to somehow this being a man, God magically reaches in and gets himself a rib and creates this woman. Of course, it stops there. God doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> he said, oops, I changed my mind. <laughs> I mean, it gets to be funny when you understand it because it overshadows the beauty of esoteric knowledge. When you understand that Eve is, in anagrammatic writing, V, the letter V, is what it spells out. And the letter V is 22 in numerology. And 22 is the master builder. Now, he reaches in and gets a rib. As soon as you pay attention to rib, at some point in your lustrous and wonderful metaphysical career, your spirit will reveal to you what a rib is. And lo and behold, you'll have it. You know, I mean, that's what it did for me, just walking down the street. You know. What is a rib? Wonderful lady in the orange blouse. Yes, you do. Don't, don't. I told you, quit doing this. If you do, keep doing it, your head will fall off. Do your head like this. <laughs> and what comes up? <laughs> and knowledge comes out. You do know what it is. Just look at the word. What is this? Your folks are eating them up by the pounds today. What is this? Huh? Don't tell her. She already knows. <laughs> what is that? A rib is a rib. So and a rib is a? Part of the, 
Hallelujah. <laughs> There's the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Pass the plate. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I mean, it's so simple, it becomes a mystery. You know? It's so simple, it becomes a mystery. Yeah? Don't thank him. You already knew and were scared to say it because you didn't want to sound foolish. You know, that's a bone. <laughs> So it becomes what? Rib bone. Now, as you have read through the Bible in front of Reverend Biscuit at Thursday Bible class study, all you colored people have been to. <laughs> you heard him talk about this. Right? That isn't the way it's spelled. It should be spelled this way. Two B's, Rabbi. In Luke and John, it is rabbi. In Matthew, it is rabboni. What is a Latin word doing in, as a title, given as a title for a Jewish master? Yeah, okay. That, that's when stuff starts to click. Yeah, because, I mean, that's how I notice it. Why is it saying Rabboni here and Rabbi in, you know? Then I look at Rabbi and I look at, you know, and what I see is not Rabbi anymore. I see a bone. <laughs> okay. Rab bone and rib bone. It's the same bone. It's the same Rabbi. It's the same master teacher, master builder. And the master teacher, master builder is who? Is Adam. The building blocks of creation. The energy field or screen of mind is atom. See? So that we find this scheme of when God put a deep sleep upon Adam. What happens to Adam when you put a deep sleep on Adam? It slows down. Slows down. That's what that means. So when it slows down slow enough, that which is pure spirit becomes dense spirit, which becomes mater, materia, matter, mother. Okay. It's there. I mean, you know, I'm simplifying it so it makes sense. The logic of it is there. It's so wisely there that it happens in a, a moment of understanding one word then the whole thing unravels itself. That's wisdom. That's not information. That's knowledge. That's not fact and fiction. You see? That's how wisdom is written from the higher mind in, in architectural design for those who are mature enough to digest it. And as we sit here, 98.9% .9 of your sisterin do not know this about Adam and Eve. They still think they were made out of a, a rib out of a man's body. See, that's how they tricked you all into building a patriarchal society with a male god only. And the female is the maid servant, the baby bear, the, da the diaper washer. And, you know, okay? No, I'm just explaining this depreciation of the spiritual and social status of woman on planet earth uh once called me a very remarkable statement on one of the talk shows arson wells and he says oh we must not get rid of women we must not we must not let women free they are our last slaves <laughs> yeah. and everybody was laughing and he just had this look of pure wisdom on his face he's an occult he's an occultist a magician of sorts but he, I had knowledge, is the thing. You know? And I, I don't think the dumb crowd really understood what the man was telling them. You see? This culture is not going to change until women become their own person. You see? You all work harder, faster, and cheaper than anybody else on planet Earth. You are the best of servants. The most loyal next to the horse. You won't literally drop dead serving your man but you'll work yourself 
till he dies. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>